Welcome to our floss tube. This is Rhonda and Drew, and this is Asbury's Echoes. And today is March 7th, and this is floss tube number 15. I think it's number 15. And before we get going here, Drew has something to share because we we kind of came home with some babies earlier this week, and he wanted to show them off. You said do you want to So we've got um, four little babies right now. We've got more ordered, I'm afraid. I kind of tend to go overboard when it comes to chickens in the spring. So we brought home four. They've, they're different breeds. We've got um, Donna the Delaware, and she's supposed to be a pretty big chicken, I think, when she gets bigger. I've never had a Delaware before. And we have Clara the Calico Princess, and Clara is supposed to lay topaz colored eggs. So we're gonna try one of her. And we have Winona, the silver lace Wyandotte. I love the Wyandots. Um, we haven't had any for a couple years. And they happen to have um, the silver laced ones there at the, the farm store. And one more, and that one is Jetta, the sapphire gem. This one's mine. And we have three sapphire gems already out there in our flock and they're so pretty. They're kind of a, like a lavender gray. They're really pretty chickens. Yes, I named her after the car. And yes, Drew named her, named his on the way home. He says, the first car I see, that's going to be the name of my chicken. So Volkswagen Jetta. Uh, Volkswagen Jetta, I guess. Maybe that's why she's so um, feisty. She likes to zoom around. So anyway, that was our... Um, that was our fun for the week. And we're gonna have Drew put the babies away because if we don't, they will drive us nuts. Oh, there you go. And the reason we name our chickens is because if you name your chickens, you can't eat them. Otherwise, um, my husband always threatens that if I keep bringing chickens home, we're gonna have to start eating them. So we name them. Okay. I wanted to say thank you to everybody. We got so many new subscribers last time and I don't know if it was the tutorial that did it or what it was. I was really worried because my tutorial was just really kind of, um, it wasn't planned and, and I'm not good at tutorials. I just kind of do my own thing. And so it was more of a showing you how I do it versus a tutorial, but Anyway, we got so many new subscribers. I was really surprised, pleasantly surprised, and we really appreciate it, don't we, Drew? Yes, we do. Um, so it still just floors me that anybody wants to watch us, or watch me, I guess. And maybe you're all here for Drew. That could, I'm pretty cool. That could very well be. Okay, so we've been a little busy this week with baby chickens, and um, we started a new project. Um, we built a, an, a farm stand or egg, I guess we're going to call it an egg stand for now because right now all we have to offer are eggs and we've just got it sitting up along the edge of the road here. We, we live on a corner so we have the highway going across over here and we have a gravel road and there's, we're out in the country but um, we still have, we still have quite a bit of, of traffic that goes by and since I tend to bring home more baby chickens than we need, I tend to have an abundance of eggs and don't really want to drive to town on a weekly basis to deliver eggs if, um, I mean, I, I could, but I really don't, we really don't want to do it that way. And we really had no intentions of having this many eggs, but when you bring home too many babies, that's what happens. So we're just gonna put up an egg stand and it's just free will donation. I don't really wanna sell the eggs necessarily. If we get enough money to help pay for feed, that's great. People need eggs, we're gonna have them out there. And then um, I'm hoping maybe we can do, I don't know, flower seeds, cause I like to harvest flower seeds all the time and you can only plant so many seeds. And so I always have an abundance of flower seeds. And if we have an abundance of produce this year, like we tend to do, even with canning and um, giving away and eating as much as we can, a lot of times we end up with 
way too many tomatoes or cucumbers or zucchini or whatever. So it'll all be out there. Drew thought maybe he could make some keychain scissor fob type things. We could offer those. I don't know. Just It's just something fun, just something different to try. And it's just to help yourself. So it just, everything's out there. We've got a little um, cooler with um, ice packs in it for the eggs and a little box for donations. And um, I think once we get it going, once we get it set up, it won't be taking up so much time, but just getting it built and painted and making the signs and all of that has taken up quite a bit of time the last couple weeks. But I think we're finally slowing down with that, aren't we? Hopefully. So that's what we've been doing. And so in the meantime, I did get a few things done. Um, darn, Drew, I forgot to write that down. Anyway, let's see. I did have, I talk about Purple Paper Mountain and their tr her trims a lot. And she sent me, she sent me some um, Rick Rack and I forgot to, I forgot to pull that out. But she sent me these, um, this Clooney lace, and this one is white, and this one is cream, or natural, it's called natural. And she talked about, um, or she mentioned she thought that it would be really good for dyeing, and so, of course, that's right up my alley. So she also sent me the blue, and I get so excited. I went and dunked the whole thing in my dye and I forgot to cut a little, little piece off so I could see how well it took the dye. But this is the blue after it's been dyed. I don't think, it's not as bright as it's showing up there on the, can we move this forward a little bit? Okay. And so this one, this is the cream, right? The natural. I always want to call it cream. I don't know why. This is the natural, and this is how it looks dyed. Now, I didn't, my dye was pretty light. I probably will try again with a darker dye and see what I get, but it definitely took the dye, and it's, um, please don't do that. That's annoying. Um, it definitely took the dye, and I really like, I really like that. I personally had not really seen much done with the laces and she, um, so she sent me some pictures of a few things. I hadn't really followed the, the, the market much, the Nashville market, um, to see what all was new and out there. Like we've been so busy and I just haven't taken the time to, to pay much attention to that. But sh there were some things that were, um, where they used the lace and it was very pretty. And then this is the the white. I think she says it's off white. Okay, so it's off white, and this is how it how it dyed. And again, much prettier for um, prim projects. But it's very. I really like it. So I did order. I ordered some more. I ordered some more blue, so that I can see how it dyed, and how much darker it got. And like I said, I think I'm going to try darkening them up even some more to get them looking a little more prim. So I did order some of those and I did use the blue. I stitched this one and I put the blue just down here along the bottom. And I think it, I really like it. I like having the, I like the lace. It just gives it a little bit more dimension and um, I just like it. And this is called Quiet Life. And I designed this one a while back and just got it stitched. It's not framed very well. I really need to work on that. Um, but I did stick it in the frame real quick and put the lace down there to see how I would like it. And full disclosure, I had dyed it and had it laying on the dining room table, didn't I, Drew? And Drew, we don't eat at the dining room table. We eat here in the kitchen, but he was out there doing something on the di at the dining room table. I cut the straw. And I, he had a straw and he um, pulled the straw up out of his cup. And so there's some, there's some splatters, but it just, it makes it look more prim, right? 
<laughs> so the coffee dye, I mean, when you use the coffee, the coffee isn't necessarily permanent. The walnut crystals, they are permanents, but the coffee dye, if you dye something with that, and then if you get it wet, you are going to see um, spots. So that's what's on there. But we'll just say it looks more primitive. It gives it a little bit of character and tells a story. Either I should not be laying my projects on the dining room table or Drew should not be playing with his straw. I don't know which it one. Playing what do you it think? Broken. It was broken. So there's that. Um, I was going to show, I did do a little bit of punch needle. Um, I know a while back I had mentioned we were going to go to Florida with my husband and that didn't end up working out right. It didn't work with his work schedule because when we had planned to go, it got it got changed, the dates got changed, and so what he was going to be doing down there was going to take a lot longer. So we just decided we would not go this time. So that's where he's at this week, which gives, gives me a little bit of time for punch needle because like I've mentioned in the past, he doesn't like the sound of the punch needle. So I worked on this one, this Blue Willow by Not Forgotten Farm. And I am i haven't finished either one of these. I don't have them fully finished, but here's, and again, I'm still learning. I am just a beginner when it comes to punch needle, but this is, um, how that one was looking. I just think it's beautiful. I love willow trees. I do have an, I have a corkscrew willow out there and it was a beautiful tree for a while and it's just starting to, it's starting to die. It's not doing well. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why, but willow trees have always been a favorite of mine. So I will make that into a pillow and I'm guessing that's Eli, Drew's friend Eli lives down the road. He calls, he calls a couple times a day and they like to chat. And Drew likes having the, Hello. the old landline phone. So Hello. that was that. And then I have um, Hello. these two little lambs or sheep. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with them. Spam. These are Teresa's Prim Treasures. It wasn't Eli, huh? Okay, Teresa's Prim Treasures, and I did, I I subscribed to Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine. I used to do, I used to have a subscription, and I didn't renew it because I didn't always find enough in it that I wanted to to do or to stitch, and I wasn't pun a punch needle person at the time, so I just never renewed it. But I did order it again. I, I just got a new subscription and I got it online and that way I can get all of the old, all the old epi or episodes, all of the old magazines. And I've started downloading them so I have them permanently. But this is, um, what on earth? <laughs> it was from vacation. Oh, okay. This one was um, from Teresa's Prim Treasures called Sheep and Tulip Pins. And I just did the sheep. I haven't done the one with the sheep and the tulip. And I was just playing around. So this one is all done with, um, I just used DMC floss. And this one I did with just, I think it was Ecru, Ecru. And then this one I did both. I did some little swirlies in there and then um, the rest of it is in white. And I probably will coffee stain them and I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I have no clue. I might do something like I did with the bumblebee I showed last time and hang it off of a, hang one of them off of um, a candle as a decoration. I don't know, we'll see. I'm just trying to learn. I'm learning this, um, this new skill. And so I also finished my punch needle little carrying case here. And I thought it turned out just perfect. It holds the little Voldani's really nice. And I can put um, DMC's in there or whatever I need. And really all I need for punch needle outside of my, my pattern, my fabric and my um, hoop are scissors and my needle and my needle threader. So there it is. That turned out really 
really nice. It was real quick. And this is Drew's. He has not done anything with his yet, but this is what they look like to begin with. This, um, this comes up. And I think he said he wants to keep that. He wants to tear all this out. And he wants to keep that yeah. and he wants to use it for, what did you decide? Earphones or? No, I'll do it for something else. Like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet. Okay, he doesn't know what he's gonna do. He just likes to mess. Yeah. So there you go. That's what they look like after. I have not put anything. I know my other one, I put some some lace right along um, the top of this. And, oh, I've got lace now. I can dye it. And maybe that's what I'll do. Use some of that because I have ordered more, like I said. Anyway, that's always fun. The babies are quieted down. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> you had them scared. So that was my punch needle projects for um, the week. And I have downloaded some more patterns. I've downloaded some from the um, Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. I downloaded a few from Etsy from Hickety Pickety. She had, hers are very prim, very prim. And they were cheap. They were like three dollars, two or three dollars. I think they were on sale when I got them. I don't know if they still are. And I don't have any to show because I didn't print off the pictures themselves. I just printed off the patterns. I don't want to, didn't want to waste the ink. So I've got a bunch, but um, I can't really show them. And I have some Not Forgotten Farm ones, some more of hers. I have some that. Um, I'd ordered a long, long time ago when I tried this a long time ago and I never punched them. And one is a farmer and wife and I can't, I really want to do those. I just have to get the, the pattern dug out. And I know I have the pattern because I double checked on Etsy and I have purchased it, but it was not a PDF. So I've got the, the paper pattern here somewhere. It's just a matter of figuring out which, um, which box it's in, I guess. And so there's that. Oh, I did these. And I put them on Instagram earlier. I'm not quite sure when. Earlier this, this week or last week. I don't remember. But I did this set of three. And I thought it turned out really cute. I went along with my word the word um, that I've been doing where I've just been selling um, each one individually. So I've done like pin keep and old buttons and oh gosh, how many, there's a bunch of them. What else have I done? Old lanterns, oh, the old homestead. And I decided to do, a, maybe do a few because I did do a set of three and it was, um, thankful, grateful, blessed. And people really seem to like that one. And I, I love having that one. Um, I, I like the three because they kind of go together and you can set them, you can put them all in a basket. You can put them, um, on a shelf. I had them up here on my shelf on the different, different tiers. Um, they just, I just like the way or a bowl. So there's a, there's a basket, just a basket full of, and they, they, they go together. So I've done, I did bumblebee. And then of course, with the word bumblebee, you have to have a bumblebee. So there's my take on a big old fat bumblebee. I love the bumblebees. I'm ready for the bees to come out again. I love to watch the old bumblebees. Um, the bumbler bees. The bumbler bees, because they, they don't fly, they just kind of, I just like, like they're bumbling around. And then of course the beehive. And since it's, you know, bees remind me of spring, you had to have some flowers. So there's, you know, you have a set of three and you can do what you, just, you know, display them however you, you would like. So I have this one. And then I had um, a new friend contact me and she makes buttons and she has made buttons for a lot of years. 
and she contacted me and asked me if I would be interested in using some of her buttons in in designs and so she sent me some buttons and when I saw these three I thought oh my goodness those would be perfect for this design and these buttons I are they're just they're beautiful they're very prim they're um, clay and they're hand painted she does them all herself and I've got a few more that I'm going to see what I can come up with as far as designs I just think they they just um, they take your prim project your prim stitch which you know of course I love and they just give it a little bit of a different look if you're looking for something different. This one I have, that thing just keeps, um, there you go. So this one, I added some little bumblebees to go along with the flowers. And this pattern is in my Etsy shop. These three are in the Etsy shop and I'm selling them as a, you know, three patterns for, for one price. But you could definitely put these three together too. I think that turned out, looks really pretty. And these buttons can be purchased directly from, and that's what I forgot to write down. It's My Stitching Piece Store, and she's on Facebook. She's not on Etsy, she sells, um, through Facebook and you just contact her through Messenger and tell you, you tell her what she what you want and then she invoices you and she ships them. And like I said, it's My Stitching Piece and it's on Facebook and her name is Jean Devereaux and I'll put everything down under the description so that um, it's all right there. And I am going to see what else I can come up with with the buttons and let me know in the in the comments do you like the buttons i do i think they are i just i like them i like the way it um changes the look if you're um, looking for something a little different i have so many pillows so so many pillows and i love them but it's nice to have the cross stitch pillows with um something a little different added I know sometimes we add charms and I love to add um, old rusty pins and old vintage buttons and that kind of thing. But this is just another, just another new. So we're gonna be working on see what we can come up with for some new things for you. But let me know if you like the buttons or if you have any ideas on what, on buttons or what we could do. And like I said, she is, um, it's Jean Devereaux and it's my stitching piece on Facebook. And it's also, I'm going to have to double look or double check. She's on Instagram and I think it is button Jean 56, but don't quote me on that. I will put that down there too. Let me write down here so I don't forget to put that on the, um, in the description for anybody who's interested. And so that's my buttons and that's my three pillows. And I have, I have three new pillows. And I'm out of designs, I gotta get busy. I need to start designing some more because I'm kind of at a, um, kind of at a standstill here. So this one is a spring design, or spring themed three pillows. And so I've got spring has sprung. And then of course spring around here anyway, you know it's spring when you see your first robin. I have not seen any robins yet. I don't know if anybody else has or not. I haven't seen. Usually you'll see posts on Facebook. Somebody will have seen a robin. And it seems like everybody else in town sees robins and then we don't see one out here for, I don't know, a week or two later. But anyway, this is my Robin, my spring Robin. And spring and, and flowers, baskets of flowers. That's when I think of spring, I think of 
robins and baby chicks and baby lambs because I grew up and we raised sheep and flowers. So that's a new one that I have put it in. I haven't posted anything really about it, but it is in the shop. So there's the three here. I don't know if I can put them in here, if you can see them. No, not really. Anyway. That's not gonna work. Anyway, there's a basket of spring, pretty spring colors. I need a different basket. We went to the antique store this morning, didn't we? After yes, school, we, we ran to town and I had, I had a list of what I wanted to find at the antique store. And usually if I have a list, I don't find what I'm looking for. And so I was looking for either a wooden dough bowl or a trencher that was not, I have all kinds of wooden bowls here and they're either too small or too big for the three, three pillows. I just wanted, I'm, I'm on the look for something that can, I can put all three pillows in and you can see them. He didn't have anything. So he did have this sweet little basket we put the baby chicks in it was cute it's cute so while we were there I did not find what I was looking for but Doreen with Privies and Prims contacted me last night and we were talking and she mentioned um, the log cabin stitcher floss tube so Doreen is with Privies and Prims and I love to watch hers and she posts she's very regular at posting so there's always something fun to watch from Doreen and I've also watched the Wooly Sheep Stitcher this past week and go watch Sherry she's so fun she has she has some really pretty patterns that she um she stitches and they're not things that I I would normally stitch but they're beautiful beautiful things and I like seeing all the I like seeing all the different things that are out there and I really enjoy Sherry and I enjoy her, her um, patterns. And this last one, she talked about her husband helping her pick out which whips to work on. And I thought that was just sweet because my husband would probably not. <laughs> I don't know what he'd say if I asked him to help me pick out which whips to, which I don't have whips because I'm a monogamous stitcher, but he, he likes this he likes my stitches but he just doesn't really get into it and discussing it with him is not something that um we probably would do much is it mm -hmm. no <laughs> and so anyway Doreen mentioned the log cabin stitcher and me being new to floss tube and new to watching floss tube I had never heard of the log cabin stitcher and she has been away, I guess, for a while. I think she said about an, a year and a half. And she's back now. And so I watched her her video last night that she had just came out with. And I will be watching more, I tell you. Her name's Bonnie. And she stitches beautiful prim things. And she showed some boxes that she has. Just little, they're little boxes that she's gotten from Hobby Lobby is what they are. And she puts her finish, her cross stitch finishes on top of the box and she finishes the inside of the box. And, you know, it's real similar to, to these, these jewelry boxes. I like this and I've done these just so I have something I can travel with because they're sturdy and, you know, they close up and, and all that. And so I like these for that. But to display my, my projects around the house, everything is prim around here. Everything's old and chippy and um, sometimes falling apart. It all has character. So she was showing these boxes and I can't just run to Hobby Lobby because Hobby Lobby is, what, 30... 40, 30, 40 minutes away. And I don't just run to Hobby Lobby. I wish I did. And it's, I, I, I'm envious of those of you that can just run to Hobby Lobby if you need something, but we don't, we can't. So I got to thinking her boxes were really neat. They were like little, just little wooden boxes and 
one had a divider in it and it was supposed to hold decks of cards and she paints them or she stains them and then she mounts her um, design on top, her stitch on top. And, and so when I was in there at the antique store today, I got to looking around and it's like, he has boxes and his boxes are um, old and imperfect and um, cheap. <laughs> so we like that and I can do what I want with them. So I found this one and I thought, you know, I could paint this, scuff it all up and I can paint it. And I'll take that thing off. That's just a fake. This is not an antique by any means, I don't think. This is just, um, I don't know, it's not worth much. But it will be perfect for me to design something and mount it on it, on there. I will paint it and I will do like Bonnie did and I will put something at the bottom, cover the bottom up with fabric or maybe some wool or I'm not sure what, but we'll figure out something. Maybe put a pin cushion in there or use it for something, sit beside your chair and keep, I don't think you could keep pencils in this. No, it's not quite big enough for pencils. Scissors. It would hold scissors, it would hold floss. So I got that one today. And when I walked up to check out, Ken says, are you crafting? I said, yep, I'm crafting. And so there was this box. And again, you know, these are very, I think, oh, this is a lane, a lane cedar chest. Yes, out of Ottumwa, Iowa, presented by Kipple and Dupringer, Ottumwa, Iowa. Oh, Ottumwa, that Iowa, that is, um, that's where our Hobby Lobby is. So we go to Ottumwa, and that's where we go to Fairway and um, to do all of our grocery shopping. And I'm not sure what it says on the bottom, but again, here's another box that I can um, put a stitched piece on top. And put something, huh? Love the smell of that. Love the smell of it. It's cedar. Yeah, it does. It smells really good. Put a, put a, something on the bottom, and this one's a little bit bigger, so this one will hold um, quite a bit more because it's it's a lot bigger than hers. I like the little ones. I really like the little ones that she was showing last night. He didn't really have any um, little little ones, but I did show. Um, I don't remember if it was last week or the week before, the long, the little long wooden box. And I had um, designed just a little, it was a little man and wife and, and um, some little motifs along the sides. And I wasn't sure how to, um, how I was going to finish it and get it put on the box. Now I know. So maybe I'll get that done and I can show it next week. And then I also came home with this one and this one's not wood, this one's metal. But again, I love anything that's old. And this is a, it's in good shape. Ooh. So that's what and I it said it was about. a bread box. But this is not for a very big loaf of bread. But I old guess, loaf of bread. yeah, it wouldn't be a very high rising loaf of bread. But that would explain why probably it has this here. I'm not sure what that's for. But anyway, I can put Ooh, might have to work with that a little bit. I'll clean it up. None of these have been cleaned up. I just brought them home. We just came home and ate some lunch and sat down and started to do this. So this is just a metal, metal box. But you can store so many things in a metal box or in a box. This could hold patterns. Yeah, that will hold patterns perfectly. I could keep all my punch needle patterns in this. Because I don't have very, uh, I don't have a tremendous amount, but I have a few, so I could put my punch needle patterns in there. And then one other thing I came home with, and I'd been eyeing these for a long time, and I don't know if I'll do anything with them. And they're only like, I don't know, I think they were $3 a piece, but he gave us a break. So I brought these home, and they're from old planters, and but they're plastic. 
when they came in. They're different colors, red one, and I'm not really sure what color this one is. It's blue on the back. It's light blue on the back. And here's a blue one, and there was a dark green one, and another funky colored one. But what I was thinking about this is it would make kind of a funky frame. And I printed off a punch needle of a chicken. And again, I forgot when we sat down to do this, I didn't have the actual picture of the chicken, of the finished chicken. I just have the pattern, so I can't show that. But it was, um, it's just a chicken and it was the size, it was a coaster. They're supposed to be coasters when you get done with them. So I kind of blew it up and I'm gonna see how that looks in one of these framed. And then maybe, I don't know, maybe I could come up with my own a sheep and a goat or a pig or a cow or a house or a cabin or uh -huh. I don't know. I need to work on that though, because if I like it, I, there were a few of these left up there at the store. So maybe I could go back and um, get the rest if I like them. I don't know. I probably don't need them, do I? Hmm? What? I don't think so. Oh, you don't know, oh, he's pointing at all the stuff. Yeah, I really, I don't need them. So that is all I have for the today, I think. How about you? I've got... Oh yeah, you have something to share. Drew has a cat shed, and I don't yes, know if... I, I think he's talked about it before. But Drew has a cat shed, and those cats, let me tell you, they are... They're pets, but yet they're, they're feral. And they live outside, and they eat the mice. And we have a big old um, grain bin up there. It's not ours, it's the neighbors, but it's close. And that grain bin brings in- um, We feed them. Rats, I'm afraid. Rats. No, the cats, we feed them every day, but they also bring down the rat. They kill the rats and they kill the mice and they kill some of my birds, but that's what cats do. And anyway, the shed is, um, so he spoils them. I've got, all our, our house and all our outer buildings are gray and, and with brown accents. And I thought it's a lot of gray. So I wanted to add something to one of the buildings to break up all the gray. And I thought I'd make this for my cat shed. So it's just a little barn board. So the original board was like a um, wood material, like this one with that. And so I just did four squares and then I painted a cat on here. It still shows the wood. That wasn't planned, but it turned out. So it's similar to um, barn quilts, right? Or barn quilts. I, I'm sure you're a, you're familiar with barn quilts, but we have a lot of barn quilts around. Um, there's an Amish community um, down the road there, and there's a there's all kinds of barn quilts hanging on the barns over in that area. And there's a few around here, and so he thought he would make a barn quilt. I thought he did a really good job. I won't we'll be able to see it, but me. But yeah, we're the only fine. ones that will see it, but that's okay. Yeah. Anybody who visits. And I worked on a sign. I painted a sign for the egg stand, but it's not quite ready yet, and I can't get it hung up anyway till Joe gets home. But he'll be home tomorrow. So that's about it, isn't it? Yes. Which reminds me, you were supposed to be doing your painting assignment oh, yeah, I was. for I I was um, geography slash language arts while we were sitting here. So I guess we better say goodbye because Drew has um, Drew has some homework to do. Uh -uh. He's supposed to paint some mushrooms. I don't like painting. That's a mood. Well, you just painted that, but you don't like painting. Because I'm in the mood. I have to be in the mood. You have to be in the mood. Okay. And he tends to want to do, he likes to paint when it's something that he comes up with, but when it's an assignment, sometimes, sometimes it's not as fun as it when you're told you have to do something versus doing it because you want to do it. But anyway, I think it's time for us to get off of here. I think I'm going to spend the afternoon crafting, stitching, designing. Um, 
cleaning up boxes, cleaning up these planner things. Ooh. And so thank you everybody for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for hitting that, ringing that bell. Ring the bell so you get notified every time we upload a new video. Ring the bell, bell so you get notified every time we upload a new, new video. Okay, that's what I was supposed to say. I have to have Drew to help me because I'm not good at these things. But thank you so much. And last time I looked, I think we were at like 910 or 912 subscribers, something like that. So I was thinking, I'm really not necessarily on here for just to get subscribers, or that wasn't the, the original intent. But if we make it to a thousand subscribers, I think we'll do a drawing. What do you think? And a live stream. And a live stream. And drawing and live stream. Well, we may do another live stream, but I don't know if we'll do one. We'll see. We'll see. But we could do um, we could do a drawing for some um, free patterns. I think that would be fun, don't you? Yeah, I think that would be fun. Okay, so we will do that. So like, share, share, is that right? Yeah. Like, share, ring the bell, comment. Please comment. I guess um, they like it when you comment. It helps with the algorithm, whatever that is. I don't understand. But what was it? Oh, yes. Let me know what you think. Think about those buttons and go check Jean out. Go check her out on my stitching piece and um, be sure and check out Christy at Purple Paper Mountain. She's on Etsy. Jean is on Facebook. And that is all and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.